Hi everyone, Nathan Hall here. Today's lesson, we're going to look at descriptive writing. We're going to focus it on a place. So, we've done this before with professions, but this is something we want to get really good at because it is something you have to use in all your classes as we go on. The big thing we're going to do, how would you describe your hometown? This can be Allentown, this can be Reading, this could be York, this could be Ponce, this could be whatever town you came from before. Whatever you can say your hometown, what's it like? What are some things some people should know about it? So Reading, we got this pagoda, hard to miss. Allentown, you got where the Iron Pigs play. If anyone's into baseball, that season is underway. And we'll also talk about some places you would like to visit. So we're going to look at uh, why we should go to these places. That's a persuasion. What we should know about them. What makes a good description. For an example, we're going to use someone from a place called Dumbo. We're named for a town, isn't it? <laughs> we have a story about a boy named ba uh, Ralph who's always dreamed of going to a big city. He doesn't live near one. So his friend Kayla moved to a borough of New York City, Brooklyn, which made him jealous. She said, what's it like? She says, crowded, loud, big. He's like, okay, I don't really no much there. So he asked her to walk around. What's the city like? He wanted to portray, to show the sights, textures, and taste. So she took some photos, which she called Dumbo, and we'll talk about what it was like. So Dumbo stands for Down Under the Manhattan Bridge Overpass. That means that when pedestrians go from Brooklyn to Manhattan here, they they can walk right under the bridge. So three, it's one of three bridges across the East River. There used to be ferries. She's talking about the history of it. If you walk under it, you can hear subway trains roaring and people talking. Look across, you'll see old stones with the tracks from the old, with the railroad lines that used to be everywhere. <laughs> so some questions. A borough is a small city. Most towns in Pennsylvania are actually boroughs. <laughs> we only actually have one town, Bloomsburg. To portray, you show what something's like, like the word portrait. This is a master portrait maker making a portrait of himself. Kind of neat, huh? So pedestrians, people who are walking, this being one of your vocabulary words. If you've seen these signs, that means, okay, someone's walking, got to stop for them. So in Pennsylvania, as a pedestrian, you always have right away. Doesn't give you the right to walk right in front of a car. That's called jaywalking. That's a crime. So here's one place she describes. Something you'd have to see in this town. Describes a chocolate shop. Jeez. Best frozen hot chocolate you've ever tasted. It all comes from Belgium. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> so now she goes into the history. It used to be a big manufacturing place. Pretty much every city in Pennsylvania used to have lots of great manufacturing. That's when they became cities. So you can see here some big names. There used to be a lot of people, a lot of activity. You can still see the um, name Robert Gare because he used to make boxes there. But now the former factories are in apartment houses. Probably the cases in your cities too. And you can also see in the background the Brooklyn Bridge. It's going to be a big landmark we'll talk about. Some of your words, refinery, where you take something, make it cleaner. So in your neighborhood, what's something people would really have to see? So check this out. Those of you in Bethlehem or Allentown probably know the Sands. It used to be a big steel mill. Those of you in Reading probably recognize this. It used to be a goggle factory. Now it's an art exhibit. <laughs> so what happened to the old factories? This will be the kind of thing to write about because I know all your cities have had that change. So this is one big landmark, the Brooklyn Bridge. It used to be just someone going across by boat. So there's even a poem on it to give some description. What makes it special? So everyone wants a photo, but causes a lot of it near this spot. One of the designers got injured as he was surveying, trying to get more information. So his son, who also got hurt, a lot of people died building this bridge. Not kidding. So they worked together to complete it. And it worked because it was one of the longest bridges ever and really helped more people get into the city. So survey, you get more information about a bridge or a place. Usually you ask questions. can also mean working with these kinds of tools. So everywhere in Pennsylvania used to be farms. How did it change? Are there any old railroad tracks? Are they still used? Are they now hiking trails? 
Those of you in Reading, if you've seen the Toon Trail, that all used to be railroad wines. <laughs> so it might be Old Canals, too. This is one from a town I used to live in. So Landmark, famous place you'd want to see. Where are some landmarks near your town? Now the food. <laughs> this person talks about Grimaldi's. Great pizza. New York is famous for its pizza. This person says best in the city known for great pizza. What's the famous food in your town? Uh, what restaurant does it to make it the best? So here, I think, yeah, for Grimaldi, she talks about a line of people up there. They make it in a brick oven, thin crust. So what are some famous foods you know about throughout the nation? We'll talk about that in the live class. Every state, every region has its own really famous food. Philadelphia's got cheesesteak. New York's got its pizza. So that'll be your assignment. Dr. Vocabulary down below. You're going to have to write about a place in a way that someone's never been there would understand. Some historic things, some landmarks, and some unique foods. Questions? Come to the live class. That's all for now. Goodbye.